Perfect Companions by Godzilla Wolf. Chapter 3. Alligator Blues. Flutter Side tried to launch Sorg Q Corner, thinking over her meaning of Rarity. Who thought the Fascinista had once been poor? Or Rarity had given up her cute Sierra to help a poor little orphan kitten? Even Flutter Side had one. Once more, Fluttering Pegasus was perplexed to how little she knew about her best friend's animals. They saved the world together, more than once, but there was still a lot about each other they didn't know. First Applejack, and now Rarity. I wonder how Pinky got gummy. She was to herself, thinking things out. Pinkie Pie was... random. There's no telling how she ended up attaining her toothless baby alligator. Various ideas ran through the Pegasus' mind, from Pinky simply finding him, taking him home, to, somehow, fending off a group of posters to rescue him using only her party can. And knowing Pinky, both were likely options. Knowing Pinkie Pie, the true answer might even be crazier. Fluttershy slowly entered the cute corner, the default meeting place for the group. Fluttershy actually hadn't spent much time here, or in Ponyville in general, before she and the other five became best friends. Looking back on it, she realized just how much she had changed. Now she came to Ponyville almost daily. It didn't feel one bit nervous. Well, most of the time. Fluttershy! Came a rather hammy voice. The fluttering Pegasus jumped, and they looked to see a now familiar blue unicorn trot up, wearing a magician's hat and cape, both with deep blue and golden stars on the trim, and new cape material purple. Oh! Hello, Trixie. She replied with a shy but friendly smile. Why, hello, Fluttershy. Michelle Mayer replied with a typical amount of overdramatics. Even when she wasn't on stage, Trixie seemed to enjoy acting like she was. Trixie was simply running an errand for the director, picking up some cupcakes for the crew. Fluttershy nodded with a smile. She found Trixie's habit of referring to herself in the third person rather strange. When asked by Pinky, the timid Pegasus was much too, well, timid to ask herself, Trixie simply replied it was a mix of force of habit and simply believe it sounded cool. How's your new job at the theater going, if you don't mind? Trixie gave a bright smile. Trixie is having a very good time. Thank you for asking. Stay safe as well. First, I gave a nod as Trixie picked up the cupcakes. You certainly earned it, she replied. Recalling the complex with Trixie's insane sister when was Jenner. Last flash I heard, Jenner had been put in an insane asylum, her mind completely broken by her inability to comprehend her own defeat and could fix it for her crimes. Flash I wasn't happy Checker was in that state, but even she had to admit there was a certain irony in the mayor who sought to control others' lives so completely. It's like sensing help as a sign of weakness to be reduced to a state of needing on others' help so much to feed her free herself. Regardless, Farsley was just glad Trixie's nightmare was over, and she finally seemed happy. Thank you. Trixie knows it was a rocky road. Thank you for everything, Fluttershy. The mayor replied, giving Fluttershy a hug, as well as return. Well, Trixie must be going now. She wants to see you a good day. You too, Trixie, Fluttershy replied, watching her leave before turning to Mrs. Kink. Hello, Mrs. Kink. The older gave a smile. Hello, Fluttershy. What would you like? Fluttershy shook her head. Um, nothing right now. I'm actually here to give Gummy a check out, and that's all right. Mrs. Kate gave a nod. It's fine. Pinkie Pie is upstairs with Gummy. I think she was expecting you. Fluttershy gave a nod. Thank you. The mayor climbed the stairs to Pinkie's bedroom. Now she thought about it. She wondered why Pinkie lived with the Kings instead of her real parents. Was there a deeper reason for it? Like there was for Applejack or Rarity? Or was it simply because she worked at Sugar Cube Corner and it was easier? I couldn't think about it. She had trouble remembering how much about Pinky's family, except that they owned a rock farm that Trixie apparently worked on for a period of time during her poverty. When she arrived, Pinky was staring at the gummy in the eyes. Um, Pinky? Pinky didn't look. One year, Fluttershine! So you're playing your typical bubbly hypertone. Gummy and I are having a staring contest! Fluttershy blinked. They gave a small smile. Pinky was so random sometimes. Finally, the earth point blinked and giggled. <laughs> oh, you went again. You're really good at this, Gummy. 
The pink ponytail bounced over to Flare's eye. Hey, Flare's eye, you here to see Gummy? Flare's eye nodded. Yes, if that's okay. Pinky gave a contagious grin. No, probably not. Flare's eye was always surprised with the sheer amount of energy the pink mare always had. Twilight so theorized that was why Pinky could eat her own body weight in sweets every day, sometimes multiple times, and not get fat. All that sugar went straight into energy to fuel the hyperactive party diamond out that was Pinkie Pie. And Fluttershy shuddered when she thought about the time Pinky had drank coffee. Fluttershy went over to the tiny alligator, looking down at him as he stared back with his purple eyes. She carefully extended the belly of a reptile, looking him over from snout to tail. She checked inside his mouth as well. While he had always been perplexed by the lack of teeth, he seemed perfectly healthy without them. Pinky kept him well fed and, well, with Gumpy, it was hard to tell, but Fluttershy assumed he was happy. While well, Fluttershy had no problem understanding animals, Gummy just didn't talk to much. Simple as that. Though, the one time he had talked to her, he said something about calculating space-time convergence. <sighs> Slice of life proves right again. So yes, Gummy was as much of an enigma as his own owner. Still, Fluttershy could tell they got along well, and Pinky loved her baby alligator dearly, as shown by the fact that she's thrown him a birthday party. At an after-birthday party, Desi put a priority over remembering it was her own birthday. And in a way, they complimented each other well. One half, you had the bubbly, bouncing mare, who was typically difficult to get to stop talking. And on the other hand, the silent, strangely intelligent baby reptile. Flareside pet coming lightly on the head and looked at Pinky. He's doing very well. You're taking good care of him. Pinky gave Gummy a hug. Thanks! I'm just really surprised. I mean, really surprised at Polly's in the audience. Thank you, I'm not having any teeth. It's my fault. I'm not that irresponsible. First, I blinked. How did he lose his teeth? I always wondered that, not that I think it's her fault. He didn't. He was born with a silly. Piggy replied, as if that would be coming to us. First, I caught her head. Thinking it was a slow nod. So it was a perfect effect. To me, it made sense. That was one question answered, but still. I pointed because it's about the tiny little alligator that filled her mind. When I heard you ask, um, Pinky? Pinkie Pie gave Fluttershy a curious look. Yeah, Fluttershy? So yes, ignoring the fact that Gummy was now hanging on her mane by her jaw. What is it? Do you want to have a party for Gummy's check up during it? Well, that would be so much fun. There could be balloons, and steamers, and punch, and... Fluttershy hesitated. But finally, her curiosity overcame her team in nature. Um, actually, um, do you think maybe you could, uh, tell me how you got Gummy? So yes, I'd be on your brain. I mean, if you want to. You don't want to, I understand. Pinky stopped listening to par party possibilities and gave an excited guess. Jumping into the air, somehow staying there for a few moments. Of course! I was wondering when you asked. First, I blinked in surprise. You, you were? Pinky nodded. Yeah, that's what this story about, isn't it? First, I caught her head, confused. Um, I guess. Pinky soon not... So now, off back with popcorn, she came to Fluttershy, to pick her up and leave me into the air herself, pulling a row of theater seats out of nowhere, and sliding beneath them as they landed it. Pinky then pulled coming close. Oh, um, what's this for? To watch the flashback, silly! Fluttershy cut her head. Um, okay. Fluttershy had given up trying to understand half of what Pinky did after finding about her Pinky sense, and then even Twilight couldn't explain it. Alright, let's get started! Well... I grew up on my family's rock farm. There's no talking, no laughing, no smiling, only rocks. But I already told that story. So, long story short, I heard my king mark thanks to Dassie's Sonic Green Boom was firing my first party. Then things got really, really fun. Piggy Pie, her mane and tail, now their normal puffed out selves, despite being a filly, hopped over to a rock as one of her sisters lost a stake in it, letting the brighter color pie bucket. She hurried to rock at which point. The three siblings passed the rocks along to each other to the parents. All having a good time at it. After I earned my guinea mark, I'm going to make things happier. So, we started having fun with our work. Like Applejack and her family? Exactly. Only, we started playing games with lace rocks. Then we started in our spare time, too. Maud really had fun doing it. Taking her siblings looked at a layer layout of rocks. Piggy picking up one up to reveal a charcoal drawing of their father. As he picked up another one to reveal the same picture, a match. We tried first in monopoly, but it didn't work so well when all the buildings were rocks. Anyway, there was this one thing that always put a smile on my face. Okay, a lot of things. 
including the grain pie visit, but he's still being happy when our cousins came to visit. Younger Kate got out of the carriage and hugged Pinky's parents with a smile. Well, they seem a lot brighter around here, Mr. Kate said, looking around, not wanting to insult his cousins, but noticing the change. Pa Pie patted Pinky on the back. That's thanks to Pink Lena here. She's made things a little happier for all of us. He said with a bit of pride in his voice. Pinky smiled ear to ear. Yep, I got my king mark. Look! She exclaimed, trying to show it. The kids both smiled and gave the filly a hug. We heard. We heard here. It's a celebrity after all. Pinky chuckled. Oh, I almost forgot. I set up the party and everything. She announced. I'll be over to the silo and opening the reveal party all set up. So, the kids are actually your cousins? Yeah, they were always so nice, and they always brought such good food, and we all had to eat with rocks. You ate rocks? Adding uh, this one to the barrel of future projections. Mom knew how to make them edible. They weren't bad, actually. We did a lot of things with rocks, actually. Like carve things out of them, and grow gems and stuff inside them. Anyway, time skip! Huh? Piggy was about a year younger than Super Presley was, or his sisters with her. The lighter gray sister now had a rock spike for her cutie mark, and darker had a split rock containing gems. The darker simply inky, looking around, finding a rock and pointing to it, while the lighter blinky put a stink in it, and Bud proceeded to pick up Boulder. If Piggy dropped the spike into a well placed buck, splitting it in two to reveal that it was full of gems. Piggy, however, gave a sad sigh, her hair straighter as she went back to work. I, I just didn't feel right, Pinky admitted, in a rare moment of looking sad, me going a little strainer. I don't want to say I was bored, I was just, I didn't feel like I belonged anymore. First I blinked, then looked sympathetic and gave Pinky a hug. I know how you feel. I tried to get back here, Mark. I just didn't feel right in Cloudsdale. I felt like I didn't belong somewhere else. Pinky nodded slowly, returning her friend's hug. Yeah. Thanks, Fireshine. What are friends for? That's exactly right. I just felt sad. My dad does it too. Like a minor? Called Popeye. Can I talk to you for a second? Pinky nodded, trying over to her father with a sad sigh. Yes, Dad? She so asked, looking to him respectfully. The spelling put a hoof on her shoulder. A serious look on her face. We all love you being here. It does a whole lot good. Poppy Pond did not see that you're not happy anymore. No, I'm fine. I'm fine. She replied, her main guarding a little straighter as she tried to sound convincing. No, you're not. You're getting more miserable every day, and every opponent can see it. Popeye said, a sound look on his face, blinking. Your sister's challenge are for rock farming. Yours isn't. You can't be yourself here any more than Octavia could be on her parents' rock farm. Piggy whimpered, eyes tearing up. But I don't want to leave. Pa sighed. Blinky, the wall Pinky promised you'll answer me truthfully, okay? Piggy sighed. Cause my heart helped the flies to get cooking in my eye. Now, are you happy or not? Piggy lowered her head, tears in her eyes. I'm not. I, I just feel lonely and, well, kinda. Feel like you belong somewhere else, don't you? Pinky nodded slowly, tears going down her face. Her father pulled her in and hugged her. You're in the wrong place for you, Pinky. It ain't good for a pony to keep a part of themselves bottled up to stay in a place they're not happy. But you will have farm rocks. Don't worry, none. We got your sister to do that. But I was going to throw pardons. Popeye put a huff on her shoulder. He does plan on how to do that. We might not make them as good as you can. But we can like do. I'll stay up with the kicks for you to stay with them. I would have gone Granny Pie to let you stay with her, but, well, after last time you went to stay with her. I just don't know what went wrong. What happened? Um, and you don't mind? Granny Pie's a picture. She just loves making Pies laugh. She's kind of like Miss Elena. So when I stayed with her, well, was there a big party and she was a clown in, well, Remember why you were also afraid of me and Bulberry during our mega party when we went to the Ginger Flip world? Yes, sorry about that. Well, that's kind of what happened. How was he supposed to know that much party with the third fault line? What? 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 I don't know, Pikey. 
Just try it, okay? If you're not happier then, the deer can come back in the blood with you, okay? Piggy hugs him and nods slowly, a few tears in her eyes. Think you promise you'll visit? Her father gave a warm smile. Cross my heart, hope the voice, take a cupcake in my eye. He replied, going through the ball suits, getting her to smile. I knew Dad was right. I wasn't happy there. So I moved to Pineville. Piggy held her carrots with her salad bags, looking around Pineville. Well, it's so bright! She so exclaimed, hopping around and looking at all the comfortable things. Then she saw ponies. It looked like a deer in headlights. I never did a lane for the rock frog before, and we didn't get many visitors outside family. The only ponies I've ever really been around were my family. I was getting scared. You were nervous? Yeah, I know. Ironic, huh? Piggy slowly tried from Ponyville. Looking at the ponies around her with nervous expressions on her face. Eyes batting around at all the ponies. As the pony approached her, she slipped into a bush. Looking out after he passed by. It's fine, Piggy. Nothing to be worried about. You're just ponies. She got ready to step out, but jumped back in afterwards. I was so nervous, because I didn't know what things were like. What was I supposed to do, or how was I supposed to act? I just felt like everyone was watching me, you know? Yes, that's how I feel a lot. That wasn't the only problem. It wasn't that I wanted to make friends. It was like I didn't really know how yet. The rock farm was the middle of nowhere, and we were the only place for miles. There weren't any ponies to make friends with. In fact, i never seen that many ponies in the same place at the same time before. Well, no wonder you were nervous. Piggy looked into the kitchen. I took a cute corner. Piggy only got the customers longingly, but hid when one of them looked her way. Mrs. King looked worriedly at her. Piggy, what's wrong? You don't like the other ponies? Piggy gave a lonely sigh. It's not that. I want to. I just... I don't know if they want to be my friends. I never tried making friends before. It's easy. Just start talking with somebody. I knew you'd do great. Piggy sighed. But what do I talk about? No one's here going to be interested in rock farming. Mrs. Cake tapped her chin and gave a smile. Look, I think I've got something for you to do. Can you set up a party for tomorrow? Piggy sobbed excitedly. A party? I love to. There can be steamers, and balloons, and cake, and... Piggy sighed, hopping around timidly. There's nothing in there. A party. Oh, I welcome to Bonyville party. So a very special just moved here. So I worked really hard setting up the biggest, bestest party I could. It really took my mind off how nervous I was. And besides, it doesn't love a party. Piggy looked up at the decorations for the party. She put her heart into setting up. Everything was perfect. The pink party retreated upstairs, knowing the room would soon be filled to the brim with ponies. She sat down at her window. The kids were racing her parents' farm with a lonely sigh. <sighs> Mom, Dad, Inky, Blinky, I feel better here, but I still don't feel like I fit in. What do I do? She asked, looking a little homesick. You were lonely, weren't you? Yeah. I did miss her, Mrs. Kink, but I was so nervous. I was afraid to ask our ponies to be my friends. I was scared. It was like when I threw my first party and thought my parents didn't like it. I know exactly how that is, Pinky. Thanks. And maybe a part of me did want to go to back to the rock farm and have something to do with it. But then something really, really neat happened. Mr. Cake walked up the stairs, his wife beside him, a good packet on his back. Like your pie? Piggy pointed to look down. Yeah. We got you a walk at the Pinyville present. Mr. Cake said with a smile, his wife taking the present and putting it in front of Pinky. Pinky's face lit up like a heartwarming tree, a rest of her toy. <laughs> the sunny mare exclaimed, pointing the bow with some difficulty, pulling the top off, following her flank. The sea blinked, looking at the packets and noticing there were air holes in it. What is it? Little purple eyes peeked out at her, blinking slightly. Hello? She asked, looking back at Frosty. It's okay, no reason to be scared. Come on out. The tiny baby alligator slowly poked his head out, looking at Piggy Pie with a cock of his head. It's a baby alligator. We know she would feel lonely, so we thought we'd get you a friend. We found him at an animal rescue shelter yesterday, and we thought he'd be perfect for you. He was born without teeth, so he'll need to get our care. I said Mrs. Kate, seeming a bit uneasy about that last part. Did you up to it? Piggy blinked, looking at the baby alligator, and staring at him for a few minutes before blinking. Wow, you're really good at staring contests. She exclaimed, peeking at the baby alligator, who lightly gunned her nose. 
Ow! No! No! I see you need to be more play buying than anything else. Ah! Heart! I'm dying! Oh, he's so cute! I think I'll call him Gummy. P lightly hugged the reptile. Gummy, you're my first fan point here. I mean, this calls for a bang! Mr. King smiled. Come on downstairs. There's something we'd like you to see. Piggy blinked, following her cousins downstairs. The moment she stepped foot into the main room, she noticed the lights were out. Hmm? What happened to the lights? They suddenly turned on to reveal a room full of ponies. SURPRISE! Piggy does a surprise, keeping a hold of Gummy. She looked around and noticed that underneath the welcome banner she put up had another one been hung. Now read, Welcome to Ponyville, Piggy Pie. Piggy gasped, looking around. Hey! I'm playing my own welcome party? The case nodded. Just wanted to make you feel welcome. Piggy gasped, looking around all the smiling ponies. A big grin working out way onto her face. All those ponies, they were just there for me. They wanted me in Ponyville. They really did. I spent so much time being nervous, I hadn't thought Ponyville might want to be my friends as much as I wanted to be theirs. Can't describe what it felt like. Yay! Thank you, thank you! Piggy exclaimed, hopping around gleefully. Oh, but can't be for going too? The pace, and everyone blinked as Pinky looked at the baby alligator. It's his first day in Ponyville. The case gave it chuckled. <laughs> so it is. Piggy peeked up, singing. It's our first day here! Pinky song, singing her hose with ponies, coming out back. We were kind of nervous before, but there was no reason to scare. We're not afraid anymore. And now we're welcome to Bunnyville today. I've seen so many friends, it's true. I wouldn't have it any other way. Welcome to Bunnyville, Gummy. And me too. And their banner was at, and now read, Welcome to Bunnyville, Piggy Pie and Gummy. So, Gummy was your first friend in Bunnyville? As Fireside, looking into tiny alligators, she stared off his face. Piggy nodded. I don't know if I'd be the same way without him. Having one friend made it easier to make more, and having more makes it easier to make new ones. I was able to talk about having pets and make friends with some of the other boys at the party, because I had him too. And that's how I got my kitty mark! Fireside blinked. Wait, what? She so asked. Then remembered, this was Piggy Pie! Never mind. Is that why you always know how to throw welcome parties for new ponies? Piggy nodded. Yep! Yeah. I feel so super duper extra happy when I got a welcome party. Now I'll make every pony feel like I could be that way when they came. After all, every pony needs a chance to make friends. What better time to have a party? First, I give a small smile. Well, everyone seems to like him. I think he's a student. Piggy giggled. Well, I got a party to plan for because Gummy's a chick of train. Train you're good. Hope you'll make it. First, I chuckled. Having her random friend held her closest companion. Piggy had trouble making friends? It was that kind of problem, past one with six from the pink pony. Still, who would guess? Gummy had been the one to open the door for her. She was right. It was easier to be open to others when you had a friend with you. Speaking of friends... Pinky, I think there might be another party for you to do first, if you don't mind. Piggy stopped in midair. Really? What kind of party? I can't see her. Ah, flyers. It's not season 5 yet, so the CNC don't ha can't have it. Oh, no, no, no. Not the CNC. 